A very good evening to all of you. I, Pooja Duseja, student manager, Biology Institute of International Business, feels an honor to stand in front of you to introduce Mr. Nilesh Dave, the corporate head HR of Deepak Nitrite Limited. Sir is a successful leader with 30 years of experience in HR management. Sir has strong professional backup of working about three decades with large industrial houses such as SR, Reliance, AV Birla Group, Lal Bhai Group, Adnani Group, Wellspan Group in different sectors like metal, textile, FMCG, fertilizer, chemical, etc. Sir is holding a bachelor degree of art from MS University of Baroda. Master of Labor Welfare and Specialization in Personal Management and Industrial Relation and a degree in law, in law from Gujarat University. Talking about his achievement, Sir was invited to study Human Resource Management System and Practices of Japan by NICC Tokyo. Sir was President of Ahmedabad Chapter of National HRD Network and had been honored by FICCI Delhi and Federation of Gujarat Industry Baroda for Best Employee Relation Award to Arvind Mill during his tenure as Head Human Resource. Sir, we are privileged to have you amongst us. I would like to request you to enlighten us with the words of your wisdom. The, sir, the dice is all yours. Good evening, friends. Is it okay? That's okay. Let me first of all thank Balaji Society for giving me this opportunity to be in front of you. It's a great honor for any Theory X generation person to be with the millennials like you. And that's why I think I feel that it is the uh, honor which has been provided by Balaji Society and the youngsters and young potential managers like you are there in front of me. And it's my pleasure and privilege. I'll be talking, I, uh, I think my introduction has been given. I am from Deepak Nitrite. I am heading corporate HR at Baroda. And we'll be talking about the Deepak Nitrite overview. My presentation will be uh, covering the overview of Deepak Nitrite. How an old company, which was almost 40 years old company, and from there, how it has reached to this level in the current year. And let me tell you the beauty of the organization is that for almost 2007-2008, the company's turnover was around 400. It was rolling around the 400 crore turnover. 400 to 500 crore, it, it was in between. So that was the time there the organization has to grow and organization has to show what kind of you know, the commitment it is showing in terms of the growth. So we had the new CEO who had come, a great leader. And at the same time, the owner also must have decided that, yes, I think there is a time that now we need to grow. In one of my, when I was introduced in this uh, company, Deepak Nitrate, by Deepak by himself, so he was asking me that uh, after all that discussion, after all the questions he's, which he has thrown to me, finally he asked me that, would you like to ask anything to me? 
and that is the only time when whatever is there in your mind you can ask to the owner once you are into the company you can't ask anything to the owner so that was the uh, time when i said that your company is because i was hailing from baroda and i said your company is almost 40 years old how the company has not grown to the kind of proportion which and the kind of potential it has why it has not grown so he has very nicely uh, averted the reply he says first thing is that you have come from all the big groups you have come from uh, sr you have come from reliance you have come from adani is lal bhai so these are all the big groups so you always feel that the uh, company has not grown to that proportion but in chemical sector our company is to an extent uh, is is one of the very uh, good achiever in 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 terms of the chemical uh, sector so that way we have done our best we have made our presence felt by reaching out to lot of customers within india lot of customer outside the india so that was the kind of uh, reply which he was trying to give and probably that is what was the situation that how the company has uh, grown so what i'll talk about is that the overview of deepak how and what strategy the top leadership has adopted during this last 5 6 years transition so those strategy which has helped the organization which was 400 to 500 crore company has reached today to almost 1500 crore company so that is what was the uh, my my uh, communication to you all and we will be discussing some of the nitty gritty of those uh, strategy part and then you know okay what what the uh, corporate expect from the youngsters like you and what you need to prepare yourself so this is what is by and large i would like to cover in my presentation and probably that may help to uh, have more uh, you know interactive on, or session on this part is an uh, company which was started by one mr ck mehta currently it is managed by mr deepak mehta headquarter in baroda as uh, headquarter in baroda it is in gujarat it is multi division multi product company these plants have been spread into the three states which is uh, maharashtra gujarat and the andhra pradesh world class infrastructure facilities we have created with a good r and d facilities there robust manufacturing facilities we have created dynamic pro product profile is there and we are catering the needs to the domestic and international the uh, clients our supply is almost to the 20 21 countries in the in the in the globe so you can say uh, the overall our revenue out of this 1500 60 to 70 percent revenue we are generating from the export only. So you can understand the catering to the needs of the export business itself is a very uh, great achievement, I would say. But otherwise, you know, it is very difficult because their norms are very stringent. And how do we fix up those norms? There has to be a proper processes. There has to be a proper technology. There has to be a proper, you know, the technical uh, aspects are involved. So that is where we cater to those demand also. so this is what is the uh, situation for this we are accredited accredited ac ac accredited with the responsible care responsible care is is a very very important in the chemical sector that when you get this label means you need to comply with lot of requirement of the of, of those uh, agencies which gives that accreditation so i think that Deepak Nitrate is one of the company in India. There are only 18 companies, and Deepak Nitrate is one of that company which has got this accreditation. Our product profile is divided into the three part. We have the uh, bulk and commodity, we have the finance specialty, and we have the optical brightening agent. Our product base is to the color industry. It goes agrochemical. It goes petrochemical. It goes rubber specialty. It goes. pharmaceutical ingredients we are making and fine and fine chemicals we are uh, supporting to so i think these are the large product profile if you see any chemical organization which is providing 
I think this is what is the Deepak nitrate is doing like, you know. This is just a give a overview of how Deepak nitrate is reached out to various countries. It includes Canada, USA, you, you know, Brazil, various countries. It has already reached China. And then now lot of other countries, we are also going into the business also. I will show you uh, in my another strategy part which is there. What is the value proposition of DNL? There are three things which we are giving much more importance. Our operational excellence, our technological advancement and our customer intensivity. So I think these are the main three areas where the value proposition of the nitrate is there. You know, any operations, it may be uh, the product or it may be the services, we always believe in the excellence part. So, operational excellence is the first uh, the and the foremost important thing which has been there. Technological advancement, there are a lot of technology we have made improvement over last uh, five to six years time. And I think that is what it is now giving us lot of benefits also. And the how much we are also uh, wanting to take care of those customer part. So these are the three value propositions of uh, DNL. You know, it was basically, as I explained to you, more of an operational approach company. So from operational approach, we thought that, you know, if we want to grow three times, like today if from 500 crore to the 1500 crore, I think we need to be more strategic rather than remaining only the operational part. So with that and why we need the uh, strategic part. So that also we had lot of uh, exercise done on that. So one was the market environment which was continuously you know changing and become uh, that stability was not there. So we need to always continuously update the uh, requirement also. Competitive intensity, I think if you know that I think there are a lot of competition even today also we find a lot of competitions, our international buyers, they have a lot of options to go and buy from the China rather than, you know, going to the uh, Indian company or uh, with our company kind of things. So that again is another area. Rapid changes in customers demand. I think there are, if you find, customer demand is lot of changes are there. They, today if they want one kind of a product profile, tomorrow they want another kind of product profile. And continuous change they are always expecting. So how do we meet those changes? So from there, I think we need to have our different strategy also on that. It is again micro, macroeconomic uncertainty. I think there are a lot of, uh, like today the China is in a bad shape and the same is impacting us also. The other countries also, the situations are going in a different way. If you take Greek or if you take any other uh, Turkey, these kind of countries are okay, continuously putting threat on us. So I think that macroeconomic uncertainty across the globe is there and that is impacting us because our 60% revenue comes from the export market. So that is what is the situation where we thought that we need to go into the strategic part also. Innovation, new competition every day as we discussed and organization's ability to be flexible. I think we decided that with, if we want to move out, if you want to grow, I think we need to have more flexible organization rather than because earlier we were known as only the nitration based company. Now from there how do we change our perception and how do we become more flexible in terms of all our product profile, all our people profile. So that is what was the uh, thought that I think we need to be more operational part or more onto the strategic part. So how organization has built the strategy? We have divided this growth part into the two aspect. I think this can always help you as a more of an, you know, kind of a case study that we have divided that what we need to do as a strategy in, from the organization's perspective, what we need to do the strategy from the HR perspective. So we have divided broadly into these two, uh, two major part. So from the organization's perspective, we have decided that let us consolidate our entire base at the uh, Gujarat or say Baroda because we were having a large scale plant at Baroda, close to Baroda. We have one of the project which has come up at uh, the hedge which is again close to Baroda. We are again investing another 1500 crore uh, in, in terms of our uh, phenol project. 
which is again is going to come up in in uh, uh, close to baroda so it is again coming at the hedge so i think that you know we decided that let us move on to gujarat and let us more focus into that uh, strategic part so that you know at least the more closeness to the various uh, such project will help us to build our uh, growth part then we have gone into the uh, again the organic growth point of view that why not we make another uh, you know the uh, developmental project also so we have invested almost 300 crore and we put up the optical brightening agent as our one of the uh, project at the hedge because we were producing dasda which is one of the raw material for optical brightening at hyderabad so we thought that why not we use that our our same uh, you know the product of hyderabad we bring it to uh, the hedge and probably we will be able to you know make this uh, project much more uh, you know cost effective and value addition also so we have developed that we have uh, made this uh, project of 300 crore at the hedge which is again optical brightening agent we have gone into the concept of sbu earlier it was only the operational company as i explained to you so each one was not fully accountable fully responsible for whatever the uh, top line is taking place whatever is the bottom line taking place so what we did that we again divided into the strategic business unit so all the entire business of the company we divided into the three factor one is bulk and commodity which has got the old kind of a business which is more of a you know the continuous business we have made the uh, fine and specialty chemical and we have made the optical brightening agent we have appointed all the uh, heads of this business and they were the completely responsible for their top line for their bottom line so right from they have been given a complete you know the responsibility and the empowerment and authority that they will be uh, from uh, procurement till marketing they will be completely responsible for that so i think by creating this kind of strategic business unit and assigning the kind of responsibility to them we have made the structure in such a way that you know each one is little more accountable so we created that kind of accountability before even having this concept we engaged the consultant also and we got this exercise done through this consultant and we found that yes i think we need to Uh, from one product one operational based company i think we need to create the kind of strategic business unit so this we have created and today it is very successfully running this entire uh, concept of a strategic business unit then we have gone into the innovation part because this chemical sector is such that you know there are a lot of chemistries involved and there are a lot of combinations are required to be done and the product mix needs to be continuously you know assessed so we were we developed the excellent r&d uh, facility at our uh, uh, baroda unit and then we found that you know the i think the whatever the uh, uh, product mix is required to be done i think a lot of r&d we need to create and we need to keep on continuously do research and development on various products and that we used to keep on assessing the market for for those product we need to keep on uh, you know uh, communicating to the our existing customer as to if you develop this kind of product will you be able to take this will you be able to use this into the other product like that so that is what again it has also created that kind of value and the market expansion you know with this new product we have gone into the market uh, growth on and we have taken the market share we have now entered into the china market though china is is a uh, you know is the kind of uh, difficult situation but still we have started our own business in china we have created our own base in china we also created our own base in us also we have created our own base in europe and we are now creating our base in the uh, opec countries and that includes indonesia and and the malaysia kind of so we want to create our our presence felt in all these areas and you know strategically enter into this market so this is what was once done from the organizations perspective so this was the strategy which we adopted for the organization these are all the details of whatever i i explained to you we have moved on to the hr strategy that okay these are the organizations point of view we are doing this strategy i think what we need to do from the hr perspective so there also there are some important things which we wanted to do that 
So we created a talent pool. So what we did, we decided that now let us induct the young blood because we, the people who are working at every level, they are all around 30 years old, 40 years old people are all working. So, you know, uh, we feel that, you know, if we don't induct the young blood, I don't think that we will be able to create the kind of organization which we want. So, at our uh, CEO has taken a decision and since last three to four years we are implementing this decision, we take almost 25 youngsters every year, 20 to 25 in that range. We take a combination of young engineers and combination of MBAs also we take. So, once we take them, our plan is that within next five to six years time, we have almost 150 to 200 people who will be in our organization, who will be floating at various positions and slowly and slowly they will be taking the leadership role and probably we will be able to change the old mindset which we want that yes, I think after these youngsters taking over, I think the organization should get a new uh, way or new thought on that. So, the, with that objective, we started creating a young pool of talent. We have also gone into the uh, very, uh, you know, the MBAs like what your institute, we are also uh, planning to go to other institute. We have inducted people from IIM and IIT also. You know, there are certain positions at the uh, top management level. All these uh, IIT, IIM people are also working with us. So that, you know, we want to build the kind of an organization which we can build over a period of another uh, three to four, five years time. Why this young talent, as you all know, adaptability to new technology is there, openness to ideas, they are more open to the ideas, attitude and approach is, is very good. They are groomed for the higher responsibility and they gain the rise for the higher occasions. So I think that is what was our objective and with that objective we decided to go into this young pool of uh, talent which we need to take that. Once we take them, we also uh, have a very scientifically designed the induction program for all these young engineers. We groom them in all our plants also. Apart from that, we groom them in our, all the uh, marketing offices are there and we take, we take care of all these young engineers so that they have got an exposure of the plant, the operations part, they have got the exposure of the business part also, they have got the uh, um, exposure of the uh, relationship part also. So all these young engineers have been given that opportunity so that you know we induct them and then make them in the organization and the organization can help uh, grow up also. Again the, uh, when we, we started this exercise, we were at the lower strata of the compensation structure. You know, we were almost at the 30 or 40 percentile of the compensation across the, some of the very known industries also. So we got this compensation survey done and then, you know, we, we drastically increased the compensation part also so that we can attract the best talent. So that is what was another objective why we have gone into the uh, compensation study and we have conducted this kind of and even implemented those uh, good compensation package to all right from the uh, young en um, engineer or management graduate till the uh, top management cadre. So that compensation part also has increased so that we can get the best talent also from the market. These are of course we, uh, this millennium young managers is because there is a freedom to work whenever and wherever they want. I think this kind of approach we want. Today we are more closely thinking that, okay, people have to come at 9 o'clock and they have to work up to 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. But we want that, you know, let the young people come and let the whole uh, approach change because I think approach should be more on productivity part and less on the timing factors. So I think that is what was the why we want these young generations variations on the job because they always look for the change in the job structure. Whereas we have the current population, if you ask them to do from X to Y, probably there are a lot of resistance is there. So why we want that the youngsters that, you know, let them have the more and more different kind of a jobs and, you know, they are also willing to take up different responsibility also. The continuous feedback, they also appreciate from all the superiors and they also want to excel in whatever the areas they, they do like. The opportunity to learn, retool and reinvent themselves. I think they also want to 
learn lot of new things, lot of new opportunities they are always exploring. So that is why we feel that you know our current stagnant lot I think we need to over a period needs to uh, you know develop them and then create the kind of an atmosphere by which at least people are more you know taking the own uh, role and self uh, driver could be there. They always have a challenge to solve the problem. So I think that problem solving approach also is one of the very important factor for the young. They also want to be changed in their lives and future. So I think that everything they want to look at it in a different way. And we want those young teams so that you know our organization also can look at the things in a completely different way. The second approach which we have taken is into the uh, you know the talent management. One was the uh, building up a good talent. Second is the talent management which we have uh, created. So in there now we have made a system that there has to be a job rotation which is you know continuously happening. So that you know uh, today if somebody has worked a plant head of a particular plant, if he has put in almost three years in a particular plant, if there is an opportunity to the other plant, we would definitely like to go him, go uh, send him to the other plant and then we always rotate the job. So there is some kind of a similarity which is there in the, in the job, in the content and if somebody wants to take up that challenge. So we have made that also as a system. So it's not by, uh, you know, by fluke, it is by design we want that there has to be a job rotation which needs to take place so that you know we can develop the people. Then there is a functional mix. We have also introduced the concept of balance scorecard and 360 degree feedback so that you know we get the best uh, what what the uh, developmental tool which we need to introduce for this uh, of our people that is what we have also introduced. So we got this 360 done, degree feedback done um, with the help of uh, Dr. T. Vira who is one of the renowned in this field. So we got this exercise done from him. We also introduced the balance scorecard concept so that you know we make the people more rational to the uh, his, his uh, targets and achieve those targets also. So making people more accountable, making people more performance oriented, we have introduced these uh, tools also. We have also gone into the individual development plan so that now today if our, my performance management exercise complete, then immediately we pre prepare the individual development plan for at least 30 to 40 people in our organization. Those who are high performer, those who are high potential people, I think we develop uh, individual development plan for those people. So that is where I think you know the whole organization is now uh, grooming up in, in a larger scale. Performance improvement plan also we have, we have introduced. I think there are a lot of uh, bell curve method which we follow and then when we find that these are the number of people who are not reaching up to that standard. So we have uh, created a performance improvement plan for all those set of people also. Media review is also a continuous process just to uh, have the better performance output. So that media review also we are now meticulously following that. Because earlier once the whole review has been done uh, once in a year, the same thing is happening. There is no other change in after that review in any case. So now we are meticulously following that media review and any such feedback, any such suggestion has to be passed on to the concerned employee. So that process also now we are meticulously following into the whole system. Then I am this, you know, we every year we pick up almost five to six people from of our um, uh, middle or senior management cadre and we, we send them for the IAM training. Maybe it may be one year program, it may be half year program and we, we develop almost six, uh, five to six people every year and we send them for this IAM based programs only, ISB or IAM. So these are the kind of uh, development also we have started taking place so that you know it is not only the bottom uh, uh, the young talent which is taking up and the developing but at every level we started now the human development process and made the process also very stringent so that you know we keep on getting the best out of output from the people. Another exercise which we have gone into the is the employee engagement process. We have conducted best place to work uh, is the uh, one organization and which conduct the study and they, they tell us that what are the organizations lacking in terms of the people perception. So what your people feel about what kind of uh, the things which are not happening in the organization. 
So, we got that base place to work study done before some 3 to 4 years back and based on those study, we started, uh, you know, making the correction plan and we, we started, uh, you know, uh, a complete action plan for that, that okay, there are some areas where team building is lacking or there are some areas where interpersonal skill is not happening, there are some areas where the uh, superior subordinate relationship is not taking place. So, we have made the corrections and, you know, take, taken all the steps so that, you know, we always can get the best output, output from the people. Likewise, we have done some kind of an HR satisfaction survey also we have done. So, with that survey also, we keep getting that yes, what, what the people uh, from the HR point of view, what are the things which people are not looking at or people are not happy with the kind of an organization where they should be like. We have done also customer satisfaction survey. So, whatever the, our marketing department has very structured uh, we have inducted one uh, consultant for that and we have structured sur survey we is being done every year with all our major customers. So, almost there are 30 to 40 major customers are there. We conduct every year a regular survey and based on their feedback in terms of the quality of product, in terms of the quality of services, in terms of the product mix, in terms of the, you know, the kind of uh, the, the quality issues which they get. I think we, we continuously now every year we keep on doing that uh, survey done so that you know we are continuously bridging the gap between the customer and our uh, product which we are uh, providing them. So I think that is what has also been a very regular exercise which we have conducted like. Then voice of employee, you know we have started one uh, blog by which you know every employee can always uh, voice his, his uh, whether his uh, frustration or suggestion or for any improvement plan or likewise. So, that voice of employee uh, kind of, uh, you know, the activities which we have started and I think every uh, month we are getting lot of such uh, employee suggestions and employee feedback and based on the best suggestion, best feedback, every month we always conduct one session and then, you know, give, the, give maybe five or six people continuously we, uh, you know, uh, appreciate them that okay they have given the best suggestion or likewise. So that way we created the kind of culture in the organization by which uh, it can give boost to the growth and the productivity of the organization. Compensation I already explained to you how we conducted that survey also. Now coming back to the expectations from young managers, you know when we all corporate we talk about it is again what, what we expect from the young managers. So, this is what is broadly probably your last two day sessions must be going on and I think lot of corporate must have come and must have explained to you and I think the list could be the same kind of but this is what is broadly the organization want, organization expect this kind of uh, um, you know the attributes from the young managers. So, what is the campus versus corporate? So, I was trying to broadly define the major qualifying criteria is your examination, you have to clear your exam and then you are through, maybe with some kind of, uh, uh, you know, expertise on some subject or maybe some kind of a practical exposure. But in industry when you come, it is the uh, performance which talks. So, it is all, everything is related to performance. So, nothing is like, you know, you pass one exam and then you are through, no, I think you have to be continuously upgradation on, on your own performance. So, continuously on toes, continuously on upgradation of your performance. You know, here it is like minimum marks or some, some kind of mark, mark is the concept. So, that okay, ye itna mil gaya, so fine, and then you are through with that. But here in the organization, I think you have to continuously excel. So, excellence is only rewarded. I think there is no minimum or a maximum. You have to continuously excel in your own field. And if you keep on doing excellence, I think you will be rewarded all the time. Otherwise, you will not be uh, considered or recognized in the organization. Maximum effort will go give you 100 percent. Here, it is not the maximum performance 100 percent. It is, I think, you continuously keep doing, you are continuously sitting with the CEO, you are continuously sent for the better training, you are continuously interacting with the vice chairman and things like that. So, here, it is like your all efforts are on a sustainable basis, on a continuous basis and you have to keep doing it like, you know, otherwise you are nowhere, uh, you know, kind of required. I, I can give you an example that, you know, one of the great IIT boy from Madras, he has hired in our company 
and after working for almost one to two years time, he was placed in two, three locations, but nobody was, you know, happy with his kind of, uh, what was the expectation. Now, if one person is wrong, it can be understood. Second person is wrong, it can be understood. Third person could be wrong. He was uh, um, rotated on three to four locations and three to four bosses, but he could not do well. So ultimately, even though he was having an IIT degree from Madras, but still, you know, we could not do anything. And then finally, uh, you know, uh, he was given an opportunity to, okay, look for some other alternate and then, you know, proceed further, which he has already done that also. So what I am trying to harp on that, you know, and here in the industry, it is the expectations part, it is the performance part, it is the contribution part, which is very, very important. Qualification for entry point, <coughs> it is the best. But once you enter, I think it is the performance which is very, very important. Usually it is 10 to 5 kind of uh, the campus. Of course, I when I was talking in the morning, when your two escort was there with me, they say, no, we are uh, having the uh, institution time is uh, 8 o'clock to uh, evening 6 o'clock and evening 8 o'clock. I think that may be an exception. And I think that uh, I would give full credit to your Balaji Society for such kind of, um, uh, you know, the grooming and such kind of uh, the training which is imparted. And I think you, you really need, you really need the applause for that. So, if that is the kind of thing, then the, uh, when you come to the corporate, you will not have any problem in terms of, you know, setting up in the corporate culture. Because corporate mein aapko time in nahi dekha jata hai. You know, that, that is what is always a say in the corporate. Aane ka time fix hai, jane ka time fix nahi hai. So, it is like that, when you, you have to come at 9 o'clock, it's fine. But when you want to go, I don't know what time you can go. So, that is the kind of culture in the corporate and I think it is good part that you all have been groomed with that kind of an uh, approach in this institute and that can always help you better in the corporate circle also. Performance only dependent on you. Yes, another important thing which I think is, is, is uh, for all of us, in uh, institution probably you can always have the in campus that okay, you are performing fine. Uh, if uh, somebody else is doing, somebody else is not doing, you are not much bothered. In corporate, everything is teamwork. Everything has got some kind of, um, uh, you know, the implications on some other uh, person also. So, if you are not a good in interpersonal relations, if you are not good in teamwork, you will be or people will ensure that you fail. And that is bound to happen that you are going to fail because you don't have that kind of an approach. So, when you uh, look at the corporate, I think you need to have much more team building approach, much more teamwork approach, much more interpersonal approach. I think that is what is, is very, very, very important. Another part is the theoretical aspect. You know, here, whatever you learn is all the theory. How this theory needs to be tackled, how this theory needs to be taken care in practical aspect is again is a very, very difficult, you know. Handling the boss or handling the, uh, how to handle the boss or how to handle the, um, the colleague is not being taught in the, uh, in the campus. Actually, when you have to practice, I think that is where you, you find lot of difficulty because, you know, these are all the very, very sensitive relationship and if any such faltering may end up your career also. I have seen many good uh, managers, many good uh, potential, highly potential managers, they are just spoiling their career because of, you know, their, uh, you know, the, they are not uh, handling properly to their uh, bosses or to their uh, you know, the, the uh, 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 colleagues. So, I think that this part is also what the theory you learn here, what practical aspect comes there. Again, I think you need to have a lot of uh, such learning needs to be there. One of your uh, part is being taken care of that, you know, you, ha you have this one or two months, uh, you know, the industry training is there. So, that part, of course, it may slightly take care of your requirement, but I am sure that also won't sufficient to understand that what actually, actually the uh, practical aspect is, uh, you know, uh, happening in the organization, I think it is very difficult. So, this part is very important and I think we all should or you all should learn also like. Educational, the competitive environment, lot of competition, survival is the of the fittest. 
so there also it is of course here also nowadays there is lot of you know competition is there but in corporate i think if you have to succeed it is the survival of fitness if you are the best you are survived if you are not best you are not survived in the uh, corporate circle so i think this is what a campus versus corporate i thought that let me give you a brief as to what kind of uh, things which is uh, happening here and what kind of things which will be happening there also in terms of the personality trait or you can say the what uh, the corporate i think positive attitude which everyone is talking about each one should have the positive attitude so there is nothing new in that ethics and integrity i think there are nowadays lot of organizations are expecting this kind of ethical background and the integrity of people are being judged on a very higher scale so i think that you know this this particular trait needs to be uh, developed amongst all the people in a very uh, proper way patience you need to have creativity i think again there are a lot of creativity is required because today the world is completely competitive so if you are creative if you are innovative you will keep on doing something in a different way and that is what is expected by the organization by the business by the market commitment of course this commitment is required in every uh, level versatility is again as we discussed also this kind of versatility is everywhere uh, there cultural affinity which kind of organization and what kind of culture is there you need to tune yourself with that kind of a culture so that again is an expectations from the organization credibility though i have mentioned it very last but it is very 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 important you know because if you develop means if you establish your credibility lot of things done lot of success is achieved through this only factor of credibility and i have learned some of the great leader in the industry who have excellent credibility which which i think they are they have over a period developed themselves that okay they are a very credible leader i'll just give you an example i think that will really give you an idea that how that credibility part some of the leaders they give very important and how they achieved also in their life because of that particular uh, factor i'll quote you an example of one sr company when initially when we started in 1988 so this was the sponge iron project that was the first project it was just started in uh, 88 and there was a uh, the project leader was there one mr sen and he was a very strong leader very uh, credible very strong very uh, powerful person and he was ensuring that how things move if you ask me frankly today even the sr group is enjoying the fruit it is only because of that uh, mr sen because he put up that sponge iron project much before the scheduled time also so there was an an incident that normally the uh, all the uh, contractors they were working almost 30 to 40 contractors were working and some 3000 4000 people were working so all those contractor used to get the salary on 5th of uh, 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 their checks on 5th of the month so uh, once and then somebody from the hajira side will go to bombay in ruya's uh, corporate office get collect the checks and um, uh, give it to the contractor so on third somebody was sent to uh, uh, bombay corporate office he uh, went there he came back on fourth morning and he was in the mr sen's cabin that yes sir i have gone there but the uh, uh, i was refused uh, the checks will not be given it will take some 3 4 days time so mr sen was absolutely furious and he called me he called on another account fellow also and he says that you know look at he says i have committed fifth date for all the contractors to get their payment means they must get on fifth this was fourth we are talking at around 9 930 even i got that lesson from mr sen he called that account fellow he told him that it was the gujarat express during that time was passing around 11 o'clock from surat to uh, mumbai so it was around 9 930 he called that account fellow he says mr kedia you take my car you go to railway station you know look at the kind of communication i think there are a lot of things to learn from this whole uh, incident he says take my car go to the railway station if you catch gujarat express you go to bombay 
if you miss gujarat express take my car straight to bombay go to the uh, sr office our corporate office meet mr uh, santholia who was one of the chief of account he was also very close to ruya very powerful man mr sen joined new it was so that people say that okay hum naye aaye hain hum kaise kar sakte hai i think this is all the lesson for all of us he says that he meet mr santholia tell him mr sen has sent me and i want the checks by today evening by all means if you refuse if mr santholia refuse go straight to mr ruya's cabin from that cabin you give me a call so this the person also understood because that was the kind of you know the leadership of mr sen he straight went to bombay he met mr santholia santholia as usual because he is a very powerful man and accounts people normally are like that you know uh, uh, they keep lot of powers with them so he refused him he says if you will refuse me i have to go to uh, mr ruya because mr sen has very clearly told me that if you re- don't get the check go straight to ruya's cabin so if you will not give me then uh, i have to go to mr ruya's cabin or else my job will go because another instruction why i was called is mr dave please ensure if mr kedia doesn't come with the checks he should not enter into my premises my uh, this site uh, uh, from tomorrow so again that was also a kind of an instruction so this fellow thought that oh, he is just like that talking so he said nahi nahi kuch nahi milega do teen din baad mein he straight went to ruya's cabin so naturally ruya's uh, pa stopped him he says that uh, uh, what is the problem he says i have to meet ruya because i have been told by mr sen and give a call to mr sen also so this gentleman immediately called up the accounts head santholia he says that this gentleman wants to meet ruya so what should we do should we i should i allow him to meet ruya or you are giving him the check so he says no no you send him back i'll give him the check so the fellow took the check and reached at the site so what i am trying to say that this is the kind of credibility which as a leader mr san or any such person who has established himself and he ensured that on fifth mo- the check payment has to be made means it has to be made the payment so i think as a uh, all youngsters or the people like us i think we really need to learn that how do we establish our credibility in whatever we do this is just one example i think whatever we do i think we need to have that kind of uh, you know the credibility which we need to establish this is what is the uh, skill gap is uh, this expectations again are there if you see these are the uh, integrity and value domain expertise interpersonal adaptability and communication these are all above 12 14 marks so i think you can understand this is what was the survey done and it was found that what are the kind of skill set which is very important in terms of the organization or in terms of the corporate so i think these are the five things which is primarily what any organization needs from all the youngsters so i think we need to continuously develop this kind of uh, you know the expertise in all these four uh, five areas what is business expectations i think you need to uh, know what is business and how we can add value because let me tell you today we have the trainees some of them are uh, one or two have come from your institute what we do every uh, two months we give them a project and after completion of those two months project they come and give a presentation to our uh, ceo so when they give a presentation only one question or two question or ceo's entire perception or not perception but entire communication was mujhe iske andar mein kitna fayda hoga mera business ko kitna value addition hoga how much i will be able to sell more with this kind of uh, approach how much i will be able to add value into the my bottom line so everything is now you know uh, rolling around the business and the value addition to the business so i think that as a i think we all need to be much more business oriented people you know then analysis of the given data i think you need to be more analytical and lot of data are available lot of data are being generated i think it system these days are very very important so i think lot of generation of new data are there so with that i think if you uh, see that we need to be more more uh, more uh, analytical in terms of our data management so i think that is what is again expectation in terms of the professional part then understanding of trends and statistics how this business is taking shape 
how the other country is behaving, what are the customers are uh, you know trying to look at. So I think those kind of trends, as a good management uh, student, I think you should be able to give us. So that, you know, organization, it helps organization to take a proper decision also on that. Then processes, I think, need to develop a lot of good processes. So that we again discussed on that. What are the complexities involved in designing the systems? I think various complexities, we also need that, you know, you also should know that what kind of complexities and complex businesses are there and what needs to be done to make it more simpler. A good interpersonal communication as I keep on harping all the time that what we need to do that. Working in a complex culture mix, I think that is where is, is also a very, very important part. This what is one survey was conducted and again the, with all this development of people or like your institutions or many uh, such management institutions, they are developing the uh, good talent. But still there are always um, uh, a little, um, uh, you know, the gap between what is expectations and what actually the delivery is. So I think that gap, uh, there was one study which was conducted and that gap has come out well. That, you know, the uh, listening part, expectation is 93%, performance is 50%. So again there is a gap. Communication, see, people may be very good in communication but still the gap exists. So I think this particular skill needs to be developed among all the, um, uh, you know, uh, student or all the uh, young talent which we are looking for. Teamwork, as I told you, they are good in performing in a solo matter, but I think they are not very good in performance of the, as a team. So I think the teamwork also needs to be developed. Analytical skill, as I uh, explained to you. Presentation part, yeah, some of these uh, institutions give excellent you know, grooming up on presentation, but some are really, even today when we take these 25 people, out of that almost 30 to 40 percent people are not very good in presentation. So I think that this particular uh, skill also needs to be groomed up and I think a lot of uh, scope of the development is there. Interpersonal skill as I explained to you and conflict resolutions. So by and large this is what the gap which is there, so what the corporate needs, what the, uh, the, the campuses, people are getting prepared or the students are getting prepared. I think there is some uh, skill gap which we need to really develop that. So uh, with this uh, few, uh, this thing, I think I am trying to make your, my point clear.